So I just recently graduated from UC San Diego with a degree in math and computer science, and I also just recently moved to Seattle to start working full time, even though it is gonna be work from home, at least till the end of the year, I think, hopefully. So for those new graduates or computer science students that are interested in tech hubs, here is a brief insight. As always, you can find timestamps in the description below, as well as all the resources that I used. So what are tech hubs and why do they exist? So I'm gonna sort of restrict the geographic location to specifically the United States because that's what I'm most familiar with. So when I say tech hub, I'm gonna guess you're thinking of Silicon Valley. That's where most people's minds automatically go. Silicon Valley is located just south of San Francisco and houses some of the largest and most desired companies of computer science, new graduates including Google, Apple, Facebook, Netflix, what else? HP, Adobe, eBay, Cisco, Yahoo, and LinkedIn, among many others. Just for a quick history lesson, Silicon Valley's history is rooted in the innovation in computer chips and silicon transistors, hence the name Silicon Valley. Additionally, it's relative close distance to Stanford University, one of the world's most prestigious universities, made Silicon Valley a hotspot for venture capital after the 1970s. And that growth has sort of continued until this day. So Silicon Silicon Valley quickly became the spot for tech companies. So here are some statistics. Silicon Valley is reported to have the highest concentration of tech workers of any city, with almost 29% of all private sector workers working in the tech industry, and additionally, the average salary of these tech workers is $144,800, which is the highest in the nation. But a high salary is only good if you can buy things with it. Silicon Valley and other tech hubs are really known for their high cost of living. And the average housing cost in Silicon Valley is actually about $2,300 per month which is pretty crazy. And trust me, you aren't renting a mansion with that amount of money, at least in Silicon Valley. The high cost of living is ultimately the result of a sort of endless feedback loop. Tech companies make a lot of money and therefore are willing to pay a lot of money and give good salaries for top talent. Thus, when all of the sort of top talent moves to, you know, work at the office, it starts increasing the average salary in the area. So you have all of these wealthy people in one area, and additionally, in many tech hubs and in Silicon Valley specifically, the housing supply is quite low. So you have low supply, high demand, and the demand is of wealthy peoples, thus the housing prices and renting prices are just really, really high. And additionally, this can be extrapolated to other businesses in the area as well. So imagine you owned a coffee shop in Silicon Valley, in the heart of it, and you know that the average tech salary is like 144K in the area, you could probably get away with charging a latte to be, you know, seven or eight dollars. And additionally, you'd probably need to charge that much simply because of the high rent prices your coffee shop would likely incur. And this trend can be seen in most of the other tech hubs throughout the United States. There was an effort to measure the concentration of tech jobs through the Bloomberg Brain Index, which effectively measures the ratio of residents in a given area that are employed in STEM fields that have advanced degrees or had an undergraduate degree in a STEM subject. The Bloomberg Brain Index separates metropolitan areas into brain concentration areas where communities are benefiting from so-called brain power. The other side are areas affected by what is called brain drain, which essentially tracks the decline of white collar STEM jobs, advanced degree holders, and STEM employment pay overall. Note that this map is from 2019 and therefore could have changed more recently, but as we can see, the areas with the highest brain concentration are Boulder, Colorado, San Jose, California, right in the heart of Silicon Valley, and Arbor, Michigan, Washington, D.C., and San Francisco, California, with some notable areas in Ithaca, New York, Boston, Massachusetts, Seattle, Washington, and Austin, Texas, among others. The cities with the highest levels of brain drain are Lebanon, Pennsylvania, Goldsboro, North Carolina, Cape Girardeau, Missouri, Victoria, Texas, and Kalui, Kalai, Hawaii? I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> if we classify metropolitan areas with the highest brain concentration scores as tech hubs, the question arises why live in a quote unquote tech hub? Well, the obvious reason is to commute to work under normal circumstances. 
Obviously, if you get hired by a fang company in Silicon Valley, you're most likely gonna have to move to the area so that you can work in the office. Additionally, many people want to live in areas that follow their interests. So let's say you're really into software engineering and tech just in general. There's a strong likelihood that you want to be in an area with people that have the same interests as you. So you might choose a tech hub like Silicon Valley in California. But how does work from home play into this all? With many tech companies like Twitter, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, pushing back work from home until at least the end of the year, and if not longer and almost indefinitely, the primary reason to live in a tech hub is almost erased, as you no longer really need to commute to any sort of office. With the option of working from home, you can work from wherever home is. But for some people, working from home is not the ideal solution, depending on a bunch of different factors uh, that could impact their productivity. Once current situations hopefully resolve, I think you'll see a more increase uh, in the demand to move to tech hubs as people start moving back into the office, but I don't know if it'll actually ever return to what it was before. And working from home for long periods or even indefinitely will definitely become less taboo just overall. Now, let's look at some pros and cons of both options. This will obviously vary depending on your personal situation and your personal preferences. First off, going into the office, you get to physically see people. So for some people that could be a definitely a pro or a con, but seeing people and having physical interactions has been shown to be healthy for your mental well-being. Additionally, it makes it easier to ask questions as you can just walk over to somebody's desk and work collaboratively. And depending on the office and the campus, you could get a bunch of free perks like free massages, free food, free gyms, anything like that. But some cons could be commuting back and forth and you spend a lot of money on gas. You might not see your friends and family as much as you'll, you know, you're spending more time commuting, you actually have to go somewhere else where they aren't, where at home you may see your friends or your family, depending on your living situation. And some people really dislike office settings in general or open offices, that's more of a personal preference. Sorry if I look really sweaty right now, it's just so hot in this room right now. Now, from a work from home perspective, some pros are obviously the convenience of just being able to wake up and pretty much hop into work, no commuting, so you don't have to worry about not getting paid for time that you're sort of dedicating to a job. Additionally, it adds the flexibility of being able to work from essentially wherever, obviously taking into account different time zones across the world. Additionally, another pro is saving money on food or gas, or maybe eating healthier, because if you can prepare all your own meals versus just like buying a sandwich somewhere. But also working from home could definitely have a lot of cons depending on your personal situation. So let's say you had five kids running around the house or you had really slow internet or your room is just devastatingly hot and you don't have air conditioning or a fan and you're just sweating all over the place and you can't think, working from home just might not work for you and therefore your productivity could definitely suffer. Additionally, with spending more time at home, you could definitely feel more isolated, which could have an impact on your mental health. Additionally, working at home, you'll likely spend more on utilities, including water and electricity. Ultimately, there are pros and cons for every option, working at home, working from the office, maybe a little bit of both that really, really depends on your personal situation. I'm not an economist or an urban planner, so I can't really say how uh, work from home and the decentralization away from tech hubs like Silicon Valley will play out in the future, but in light of 2020 events, I can definitely see how working from home will become less taboo in addition to all of the emerging telecommunication technologies. And even if we look at statistics, from 2005 to 2017, we can see that remote work actually increased by 159%, and with 2020, that has almost certainly greatly increased as well. For me, I actually like working in an office and physically going somewhere as like, you know, I get to see people there, get to say hi, see how people day, days are going, you know. If I have a question, I can walk over to somebody's desk. Hopefully there's a lot of free food so I don't have to spend money on the food. And commuting isn't a huge thing, at least for me. Where I live right now in Seattle, there's uh, you know pretty good public transportation. So 
Um, that definitely saves some money. And also just the seeing people is a big thing for me. But obviously this again is just personal preference and some people could hate going into the office and absolutely despise it and just love the convenience from working from home. What I'm trying to say is that under normal circumstances, I don't think one option is the, is the best. I don't think 100% of people should be working in the office and I don't think 100% of people should be working from home. I think it's, it should be a healthy mix and hopefully in the future it'll be up to you whether how much time you want to spend in the office and how much time you want to work from home. And it'll ultimately be up to you to decide on what makes you the most productive and the happiest. That's an important thing to consider too. I moved to Seattle not only to be within commuting distance of where I'll be working, but also because I needed a change up. So for those not familiar with the channel, I just graduated from UC San Diego, as I mentioned earlier in the video. So I was basically living in San Diego for four years with some brief stints abroad, and I really just wanted a change of scenery. After receiving a job offer to become a software engineer in Seattle, now a program manager, I was excited to move to a so-called, you know, tech hub or tech metropolitan area and to be surrounded by technological innovations at companies like Microsoft and Amazon, as well as super, super smart and talented engineers really, really makes me excited to sort of be in this area. And it doesn't hurt that I heard Seattle has some bomb coffee. So comment down below how you think tech hubs will be impacted by work from home and what are you looking forward to now if you stuck to the end thank you so much consider hitting that subscribe and like button i really hope you like the video i know we got a new background this time guys a new one uh it's because i moved you know hopefully like my little daft daft punk poster back there and a one punch man poster over there stay tuned for future videos of mine i hope you enjoyed this one if you're new to the channel and stuck to the end thank you very much i make college advice tech videos and computer science videos if you aren't interested in any of those again consider subscribing it would mean an absolute ton to me i'm working on some other computer science builds so stay tuned as i mentioned if you watched my couple of last videos the the wrist is healing nicely the scar is looking like harry potter you know in essence thank you so much for your support i'm looking really forward to the future here in seattle as well as the future of the youtube channel with a lot to come comment down below any video suggestions you have for me. Tune into my next video for when I learn how to front flip. Bye bye.